2016. Uh, can you pull that? Um, I can't pull it on. Right. Um, is there a motion to approve resolution number 73 2016? I motion to approve resolution 73 2016. I'll second. Amy, please pull the council. Mr. Blood? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Mr. Cordier? Epstein. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ordinances for second reading, public hearing, and or final adoption. Ordinance number 3-2016, an ordinance of the Township of Pemberton establishing the residency hiring criteria and preference for the selection of police officers for employment within the Township of Pemberton. Uh, this portion of the meeting is now open to the public. This portion, Ms. Waters. I think that there have been some very valid the reasons presented as to why our police uh, force is, is down in numbers. I also uh, accept the explanation that we have got to reach outside the township and that if 90 some percent of our officers are living outside the township, it doesn't make sense to restrict recruiting to within the township. But what I would ask of, of council and administration and of our police, police department is that when we have sufficient staff to increase the community outreach within this town to increase the mentoring of young people by our officers to inspire our young people as they're coming up from middle school through our high school <coughs> to consider a career in uh, law enforcement and to understand that they must be physically, mentally, and morally fit to assume those duties. I think there's no better example than a police officer to the youth of our community. And it seems to me that if we have too few officers to adequately cover the uh, patrols and the calls, that their ability to, to mentor our youth is going to be restricted. I would also like to see uh, some kind of incentives for our police officers to live within the township. I think that police officers and their families offer a great deal to neighborhoods. There is a sense of safety knowing that you have a police officer in your block. I know I, we have a, in our block on Rateau Avenue, there is a retired police officer. Uh, it feels good to know that she's there. And I think, again, that, that when the township youth are better acquainted through their neighborhood exposure to the officer and and the officer's family that that sets a very positive example so it seems to me that that if there can be incentives built in in some way for people to live within the township perhaps some tax advantage Perhaps there could be some sign-on or relocation bonuses considered. Uh, I know these are long-range things and we can't uh, solve our immediate problems with those uh, efforts. But within 10 or 20 years, if we uh, effectively consider alternative approaches, perhaps we can have a greater number of our officers living within our township. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I would, Council President, one of the questions that I would ask is why are our police officers leaving the township? That, would, to me, would seem to be the biggest question if they start here, get hired, and then leave. 
but I, I we would all, you would feel safer if you had an officer mm -hmm. living on your block. We would, I'm sure, you know, have the kids come out and build that relationship. But I'm sure it's very hard to do if they're not living in our town. Seeing no other public comments, uh, Council, is there any additional discussion? No, not for me. If not, is there a motion to adopt Ordinance Number Three Dash Twenty Sixteen? I motion to adopt Ordinance Three Twenty Sixteen. Is there a second? Second. Amy, please pull the council. <coughs> Mrs. Trublot? Yes. Mr. Cartier? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Albert? <coughs> yes. Ordinance number 5-2016, an ordinance establishing salaries for certain employees and elected officials of the Township of Peverton. This portion of the meeting is now open to the public. Mr. Tam. I don't see the court clerk on here. And that's probably one of the most responsible positions in the township is the court clerk. Well. So that means that her position wouldn't be covered under, under this ordinance? Why or, not? Or, or there was no need to change. That's what I was oh. going to say. This is really just to change salaries requesting to change salary so I would guess that the court clerk's salary wasn't an issue in regards to this. Is that Why not? The most responsible job there is in the township is the court clerk. I think they're all responsible Mr. Tam but that's my opinion. Do we know why the court clerk isn't on here? I don't think it was on the previous ordinance. It wasn't but I'm saying is there. I don't think that title has ever been on that I believe the court yeah, clerk's in the uh, union. She's in the CWA union. So she's no longer on there. So that's why these Pardon? aren't these aren't these aren't u union contracted employees. That's on this ordinance. So that's why she's a union under union contract. It was just Correct. mentioned that she she may be under the CWA, which is. Are you union. sure about it? Somebody should know with a positive answer. The mayor should know. The administrator's not here, but he's uh, still yes. in. Yeah. He said yes, Mr. Tam. Yeah. She's under contract. Okay. May I just say yes? These, the, these positions that are on here now go before council every every year. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. Just ask. Now, on Article 2, the chief shall not be entitled to any longevity, pay, clothing, and weapons. So ask. <coughs> What's the rationale behind that? <coughs> the lieutenant is, but not the chief. Doesn't make any sense. Why is it in there? Well, that is. I'm assuming it's a department head, but I don't know for sure. Is that the reason that he's a department head? He is a department head, and he's not. He's a non-union uh, employee that gives uh, the township the ability to have a different uh, standard for his benefits. His salary reflects a higher salary than the lieutenants, which is by law, uh, and the lieutenants do get the longevity, so their base pay is much lower, but with the longevity, it brings them much closer to the chief, uh, but the chief is still uh, the highest paid employee in the township, uh, despite having longevity. Uh, the weapon is a, uh, an issue upon retirement, taking the weapon after he retires. Uh, we're not in the arms business in the township. And uh, uh, what was the other benefit that clothing clothing, clothing allowance? Yes, uh, the chief has supplied uniforms, and uh, you know, we do allow him to take his uniforms to the cl cleaners, like all the other officers. But he's not given a specific clothing allowance in the police department. The only ones that get that are uh, individuals uh, in the detective division that have to wear plain clothes. So his salary will go to $122, $277. Yes. 
No, the chief no, stays the I'm same. I'm sorry. The chief stays the same. Pardon? The chief stays the same. That salary is what it was in the last ordinance last year. So there is no increase for the chief. Is that place. what he's getting now? Yes, sir. Right. That's the maximum it can go. It's the range. That's the range. That's the maximum. These are ranges. You see one, the one column says minimum and one says maximum. I just wanted to find out if you're eliminating longevity pay, clothing, and weapons, that oh. he's getting compensated for that amount fairly compared to the rest of them. But we're not eliminating it. He, he hasn't, the chief has never gotten longevity, clothing, or weapons. Okay. Mr. Tame, I do have a copy of Ordinance uh, 4-2015 right here in front of me, and the verbiage for the chief, the salaries, everything are identical to what's in front of us tonight. Okay, fine. Now, how much, what's the percentage of these raises that are going to affect this year's budget? Are you asking this paper that you have, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, the paper you have in front of you, are you saying, do you think this is what we're giving them? This is just saying that this is the minimum and that other be column is the you, max. I don't know. It I know. I'm asking you to explain the question, maybe. The question is, if this is passed tonight, what is uh -huh. the percentage of increase two in percent. salaries for two these percent, salaries? Mr. On average, 2%. Some are actually uh, reductions of 10%. This this is the range of salary we may pay an that's individual that's saying. put right. into the position. We, we won't know pay. what they actually get paid until so the budget is adopted I later on. I just heard on. the mayor said there may be a reduction of 10% on some. Um, is that correct? There, it, there are, most of these employees here are at 2%. There's a, there's a position that's a 10% reduction. Yes, that is correct. So it will allow 10% reduction on some. A new hire. No, that's just one position, Mr. Tam. Mm -hmm. One position. But as, as Councilman uh, Tompkins had mentioned, these numbers, it's, it's set up as a range, so it gives flexibility for administration when hiring and replacing new positions to be able to start lower or work higher depending on the credibility and the qualifications of the individual that we're hiring and uh, it allows us to uh, you know start lower or essentially uh, go to the top if someone's worth it and but I think it the budget dictates how much we're able to uh, how, how much we're able to go to council okay. will uh, finalize the budget with a number for these positions and that's that sets the number that basically is the range that we're allowed to uh, reach. That's the range, but the final is still going to be with the advice and consent of the council. Is that correct? That's in the yes, budget. Sir. In the budget. Okay. In the budget. Seeing no other hands, this portion of the meeting is now closed to the public. Uh, council, is there any other discussion? I'm still not happy with it. I think the minimum salaries should stay at what they were in the 2015 budget or uh, ordinance. It, it leaves us no room. But it, it limits our negotiation ability. Is there any further discussion? I may have a heart Just attack because I agree with Jack. I think my heart stopped. I think something's <laughs> going on. <laughs> Did, Amy, you sent the email out when I provided the examples of other employers that use um, oh, sorry. minimum maximum ranges. Mm -hmm. um, is there uh, a motion to adopt ordinance number 5-2016? We're not going to discuss that then. That's what we're doing. I okay. just asked. And you might I thought we were still it. discussing it. Oh, is there any other discussion? Sorry, my bad. I made my comment too. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number 5 2016? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second ordinance 5 2016. Amy, please pull the council. Mr. Cartier? Yes. Ms. Trupa? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? No. Ms. Jackson? No. Mr. 
Mr. Allen. Yes. Jason, if I could. I have a letter here <clears throat> to uh, uh, our HR, and it is from me, and the subject is annual salary. Uh, Everton Township Council is currently considering approving Ordinance 5 2016, which we just passed. Uh, in this ordinance, uh, Township Council member maximum salary will be increased to $7,846 annually. Uh, I do not support this an ordinance uh, in the event of the passage and adoption. I request my salary remain at the current maximum salary of $7,730 per year. Uh, I know it's not a lot, but uh, I did sign it. If you could pass that down to Amy to turn into HR tomorrow, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Jack, you were, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Jack, you, you pulled um, under new business 12A? Yes, sir. And it shouldn't be any surprise. I wasn't in favor of this last time it was presented to us. Um, I, I really think that our money could be spent better or more wisely. Uh, almost $4,000 for an 80-inch TV, I think, is re unrealistic. Uh, I do agree that there needs to be a replacement put in the senior center. Uh, I did go over and I looked at the facility, and, and what they have is older and probably inadequate. Um, my personal feelings at the last hearing were, or at the last time we addressed this, was possibly uh, procuring two 65-inch TVs to replace both of the TVs that are there. And it would still be cheaper than what we're, we're spending on one TV. Uh, I actually went online last night and was looking a little bit through one or two of the big boxes uh, for retail. And you can actually pick up a 65-inch curved TV now uh, for $2,000. And they're supposed to be phenomenal TVs. Uh, well, if we get two 65 at 2000 that's almost the same. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Kind of interesting because um, the TVs that I looked up, uh, there was a 75 inch um, Samsung 1080, but that was $4,997. What uh, website were you on for 2000? Best Buy. Best Buy? Best Buy. I didn't want to throw a, a name out, Jason. And the other thing I see here, the, the, the last time it was presented to us, it was, it was brought up that there was going to be mounting for the TV provided as well, and it was going to be an extended warranty because it was going through, uh, at the time, Costco. Uh, and Costco does have, you know, a phenomenal warranty. Uh, we're going directly through the vendor this time, and I don't see any mention of mounting, so that would be an additional cost. Uh, and then the warranty isn't there as well. Is the mounting is something that the township can do? No. no. <laughs> the mounts are usually a couple hundred dollars for a TV this size. So who will be mounting? I mean, my understanding, they're still going to purchase the mount for the TV, um, but the, I guess through Costco. But they're going to uh, purchase the TV through Vizio, which is a two hundred dollar reduction from the Costco price that we had originally approved, and I commend the Director of Senior Services for her efforts in finding this substitute. Your comments about the 65 inch going to 265 inches won't solve the problem unless we're uh, looking to turn the senior center into something similar to a sports bar and mount TVs all around it. The There's currently two in there right now, Mr. In, in which room? There's one in the, the main general room area right. and then if you go in the front or the back door I guess make a right hand turn through the gym well, I know where it's at oh, well then you're asking me <laughs> well I you already know where it is why are you asking me I thought maybe they put another one because this TV is the, the TV that's generally used for uh, that we're replacing is used for uh, larger amounts of seniors that are in for exercising or for watching uh, movies the TV in the back is is a separate 
uh, system for you know individual or, or smaller groups. This is for the for the. But the two TVs are identical. They're both rear projected TVs. They're, they're identical. What's in they, both they, rooms they, are identical. They may TVs. be right now, but are the rooms identical? You can't fit all the people in the small room as you can in the large room. This is intended for the large room, and the 80 inch is intended to increase the viewing field of the TV for the seniors in the larger room. Seniors don't really have the best eyes, because I, I know I don't at 35 years old. <laughs> and, so. and in a larger room, you would you would put a larger TV. Smaller TVs are not the uh, not the solution. And most likely, Mayor, would this also come with a warranty like Calvin's? Yes, with there'll be a uh, manufacturer's warranty? warranty with it. Probably a one-year limited warranty, right? Uh, that I don't know. The other question I had is I was looking through the budget. Heaven forbid. Um, is this currently listed in the budget? Is this a budgeted item for this year's budget? Because I couldn't find it. And you won't. Because if you look at the purchase, and I'll find it here in a second. I know I just had it. You'll see an account number on there that the TV is being purchased from. Senior Center Services Furniture. What's your count? Senior Citizen Services Furniture Line. And that is where it's being furnished. I, I apologize. I was going to uh, another account that I assumed she had charged. But it is uh, it is in the uh, in the furniture equipment, or basically considered furniture line. You won't see it in the furniture line, but the bottom line of the budget. Uh, it is. It will be in the budget. The budget is not where you're looking. You're looking in the workbook which is the budget plan and the spending plan and that spending plan is obviously going to have to change if we're buying a TV out of it. Mm -hmm. So there'll be adjustments throughout the year so that some of the other things that they may have wanted for the senior center may be adjusted to, uh, to meet the needs of the current things they want. But it's the bottom line in the budget uh, that is what is uh, pertinent here. And the money will be in the budget for the item uh, as certified by the CFO. Being that our senior center is a, a area where there are many, many seniors there on at almost any given time in that large room, I don't see the point where, or the reason behind us not approving this for them to have a larger TV where there's a lot of people. Um, all at one time, like you said, when I worked for the rec office, they watched movies, they did this, they did that. I I don't see any reason for us not to um, approve this. Ms. The uh, senior director is there on a more regular basis than any of us, and we have to trust that if she says that the seniors need this, it's a huge TV that they we do a lot of things for. Not yes, I will. Thank you. You're welcome. It. it still has nothing to do with the senior center getting their big TV. I agree with that. Uh -huh. right, is there any other discussion? Okay. Is there a motion to uh, approve? My motion to approve. I'll second. 12A1. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 12A1. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> Norma seconded, right? Uh, please, pull, uh, sorry. please pull the council. Mrs. Trudla? Yes. Mrs. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? No. Mr. Cornier? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Quality purchase for quality people. Um, moving on. Discussion and possible amendment to the towing ordinance. Uh, council, as we discussed, I uh, discussed with each of you and um, Andy Moe came to the mic um, earlier today. Um, our township solicitor, not you, the other one, Andy Bear, had, um, <laughs> had surgery and was in the hospital all week, so he did not get the chance to uh, review the ordinance. Um, and I think we'd all like him to review it as well. Um, so if we could put this on to the next meeting. And um, administration has already informed us that any changes that council as a whole makes to the ordinance, uh, they will be reflective in the contract with the 
what is it, three, three companies? Yes, three companies. Sir. Well, have one. That's fine? Yes. Yeah. For me. Um, <coughs> can you pull the, uh, the bill list, page eight? By, by budget account? Yes. Page eight. The entire fire department? Yes. Okay, so is there a motion to approve <coughs> the bill list entire fire department? Is I'll make that motion. Yeah, that it's, a, it's a motion to approve the bills listed on page eight that uh, apply to the fire department, which had been pulled by uh, count at the request of Council McCarty. Is there a second? A second. Amy, please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Mr. Trueblood? Yes. Mr. Cartier? Abstain. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Adams? Yes. Solicitor's report? I have no report tonight other than the report that uh, Mr. Bayer, your township solicitor, is uh, back to work starting today, at least uh, on a part-time status, and is uh, hopefully recovering from the surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Administration? No report, but I would comment that I disagree with Ms. Maldonado's comment earlier that administration, how many times administration has given public false information, and I don't know of any. <coughs> Thank you. Council comments? Yeah. Um, Mr. Well, Tompkins? Normal looks like she was going to start. Yeah. She was. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone coming out. But um, with the um, revals of the homes, I know I have been questioned a lot as well when those letters went out. And maybe, perhaps, it would be a good idea to have something in reference to instructing our residents, because we are residents ourselves. So, you know, do we do they come in? Do they don't? This is what's been arising for the last week since everyone got the um, those letters. So that's something that maybe we could think about and we put something on the website too though mm -hmm. but that question comes up do you let them in do you not what, what like miss baldonado said it is something of, uh, that you have to take into consideration i mean i'm telling the ones I, everyone that it comes to me i said it's it's your prerogative and if you want to let them in because you want to to prove that you got three three rooms and two bathrooms or whatever and it's it's everyone's choice it's an individual choice i i don't know what else to say but it's something that was mandated and i've gotten calls saying or well this is something that the township well no it's something that was mandated by the state and that's something we couldn't it's something you could do you have to follow those laws it was mandated by the state so it's not just we are residents as well so we're we're i mean that's something that and that's just something I just wanted to say, but it is an, a, a law that was mandated by the state. Mm -hmm. But it's how to go about it, you know, questions are arising. And, if, you know, there's people, there's residents questioning. It, what do it, we do? It's not just wrestling. I got these questions in my own house. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> so thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> uh, Mr. Tompkins. I'm going to be winded, so forgive me. Cut me off at my three minutes, and I'll c keep talking anyway. Um, young lady come up and talk to us at the last council meeting. Okay. And I looked through the code book. I couldn't find. I found chickens. <laughs> I found reference to chickens being livestock. But I couldn't find anything in the code book saying that this young lady couldn't have chickens in her yard. Is there any way you could reach out to code enforcement? and point me in the right direction on the ordinance that I need to review to think about maybe Falls suggesting. Under zoning, Mr. the zoning Tom, section, I believe it's actually, 190. I already have a list of codes that I need to review that I was about to send to council on that very subject so that when they want to discuss it again during council meeting, they can. I have some codes to review for you. Okay. Because I, I actually, believe it or not, I bumped into Lillianna this afternoon. I was talking to one of the school crossing guards across the street, and she walked right up to me. So it, it is a small community. It really is. Um, and that being said, 
we're having warmer weather. Uh, and I've been sitting out a little bit more in the, in, in the yard. Uh, I'm a retiree. I just do whatever I feel like doing half the time. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been seeing a lot more speeding vehicles going up and down the road. Uh, and I live in the school zone. Uh, I even witnessed a car passing a, a car in a school zone in front of my house. Um, I thought maybe it was due to a lack of police officers that we weren't getting them out there running radar. But I'm informed tonight that we have an adequate supply of police officers, so we might want to focus a little bit more in the school zones during school time. Uh, I know when I was leaving the house tonight, there was a police officer 75 feet from my, my front door running radar. Uh, thank goodness I didn't hit the gas real hard when I pulled out of my driveway. But it is a concern. The weather is getting nicer. The kids are out starting to play. Um, heaven forbid one of these kids run out in, the, in, in front of the street and something bad happened. Uh, the other question I had was uh, I saw an open bid for some plumbing supplies and I inquired to the clerk and she gave me a listing of, of some of the supplies there. Um, Mr. Mayor, can you answer why we're looking for a half a mile of PVC? Install it. Is this a new project, or is this just maintaining our water system, or we're replacing our our uh, old lines daily throughout the town? We're upgrading all our lines to the PVC. Okay. The four inch or six inch. Uh, they, last year they did a major project. Uh, how many feet, but a lot on North Lake Shore. Might have been a year before now, I'm thinking about time flies on North Lake Shore Drive. Our guys are constantly putting in mains in the town. So this will be something that's that, that's normally budgeted through the water division? Is that yeah. the correct phrase? Correct. Okay. Being a new council person, I'm not aware of all the ins and outs. Um, and then my last thing, uh, I'm going to throw at the solicitor, and I'm sorry you might have to pass it on to Andy. For, for information and I got a feeling uh, I got a feeling that this is going to fall into a situation where Mrs. Waters suggestion of independent counsel might fall in handy uh, I came in Monday uh, to pick up some it was a matter of fact it was a bill list for tonight's council meeting <coughs> and I finished up and I walked outside and I went to get in my car and I see three police officers out in the parking lot putting on their gear. Uh, the first thought that jumped into my mind is why aren't they in the locker rooms instead of changing their clothes out or changing out here in the parking lot. Um, I think it sends a wrong message. I don't agree with it. Um, I know administration has uh, control over running day-to-day -day whatever. Uh, I know they set the policies and the policy is seven minutes before the shift they can utilize the locker room. But after their shift, they have to remove everything from the locker room, and I do not agree with that. And I'm kind of wondering if we could pass some kind of ordinance in this town to specifically authorize those officers to get into that locker room. Okay, we'll look into it and we'll get back to you. You're saying, Jack, to get into the locker room went prior more time than they're already allotted? Is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to... My understanding is... and. The mayor sitting right here. My understanding is the, the, the officers are only authorized to be in the locker room seven minutes before their shift starts. And you want an ordinance to say? That they can go in there 30 minutes before their shift starts and that they can have a dedicated locker of their own that they can store their uniform items in 24-7 and they're not transporting it back and forth in their trunk of their car. Heaven forbid their car gets stolen and then all this pro gear is out on the street. It's ridiculous. When I was in the military, if one of my supervisors would have said, you have to change in your uniform out in the, out in the parking lot, blanket party is all I can say. And anyone that served in the military knows what a blanket party is. That doesn't make a darn bit of sense. So you want us to approve an ordinance so they can get into the locker room 30 minutes before their shift? 30 minutes before, and I'd say 30 minutes after. That gives them ad adequate time to change into uniform and then change out of. And, and I'm being devil's advocate here, but why do, do you think that they would need the 30 minutes? I'm just asking. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. I don't know. How long does it take you to get dressed for You counseling? can't ask a woman that. <laughs> <laughs> we not have, fair question. That's have, a loaded question. We have female officers, though. Yeah. 
So, you know, and, and you know. Okay, so how long did it take you to put on your military uniform? It depended on where I was. It usually took me a couple of minutes to shake my boots out if I was in the desert because I wanted to put my I feet in with scorpions. Did you search? <laughs> you know? I, I, don't, I really don't know. That's why I'm asking. We're agreeing to can you have get a dressed, conversation. Can you get dressed in seven out. minutes? Well, I was a mom of two kids under two at times. I'm, I'm sure I could probably whip it on real quick. But that's neither, neither here nor there. I can't really say I'm not an officer and I was never in the military, so I'm just asking and the question to get a better understanding. And, and the other thing is, every time I see one of our police officers, I don't agree with everything our police department does. Forgive me. I, 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 I just don't. I agree. But every time I see one of our officers, they, uh, they, they just scream, I'm a professional. I mean, your uniforms are immaculate. I mean, they're, they're very professional in appearance and, 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 and the way they present themselves. Um, I wouldn't want to run afoul of a couple of them because I know I'd probably be eating dirt for a while, but they always look very professional. And it takes time to put on that pro professional appearance. That just doesn't happen. And that's, that's why I'm looking at this. Seven minutes in the parking lot is not the way to do this. And especially like Monday when I was doing it, we were holding court in this facility. So they're out there getting dressed in front of some of the people that they were arresting earlier in the week. There's locker rooms in the, I mean, there's lockers in the locker room now, correct? There are lockers in the locker room, and when I reviewed or went in there, there were probably enough lockers for each individual female officer, but I think we have a shortage for male if we were to assign a locker to every officer. But to let this go on so long is ridiculous. Uh, it's an insult to our officers. It's an insult to our township. And that's my 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Ms. Actually, that was eight. Ms. Jackson? Um, yes. Mr. Mayor, the scrap metal that um, we sell, what, where do we get that? Where do we collect that from? That could come from almost anywhere from work that we do through public works that may have some scrap left over, whether it's uh, replacing the street sign that may have got hit uh, or something we found, find alongside the road. It's any metal objects that uh, are collected by our DPW uh, that get collected over a period of time and when our bin gets filled we seek out the uh, highest paying company and we sell it to the highest paying company. There is no inventory as to what it is because it could be nuts, bolts, it could be a piece of wire, uh, you know, and you've got a whole dumpster full of metal. Uh, it's scrap metal is what it is. And, uh, as you've seen in the, uh, in the resolution, it, it authorizes the sale to the highest bidder, so it's not you know, somebody getting a deal here. Just ballpark, how much do we usually get from it? Not much, I'm sure. Each time we sell it, probably a couple hundred dollars to maybe a little more, but we're not talking that. It's below the bid threshold. That's what the ordinance or the resolution, uh, you know, references, and that's what we have to, you know, uh, abide by. Otherwise, we'd have to bid this. That includes, like, set. copper wire and stuff like that? It could that. be okay. copper wire. It could just be a, a piece of galvanized fence post whatever happens to be you know, for sale. You know, we get okay. some stuff. I'd say a good part of the stuff comes from the water division, you know, where you're dealing with copper and brass, okay. uh, a little more pricey. Okay, thank you. Um, another question with the tax in inspection. If people, somebody said, I'm, I apologize, I don't remember who, Oh, Sherry said that her friend got the wrong, she had a three bedroom, one and a half, it came up more. If any of our residents get that now in this tax assessment, what do they do for that? Do they, can they dispute it? Appeals it. Appeal, they can appeal it? Yes, there is a okay. process. I believe there's a process through the reval process uh, where you can actually have conference with the reval uh, people before it's finalized and before they submit, uh, if I recall correctly, on the uh, on the bid that was accepted and then once once it's all done and the, the 
reval is done and everyone's taxes are reset, then you also have the right to appeal your taxes with the county tax board. Thank you. That's good to know. Um, thank you, Jack, for, for us agreeing to disagree. All right. Always. Um, and I am going to tell you thank you to Sherry for acknowledging the difficulty up here sometimes. I do appreciate that. I do thank everyone for their comments tonight and for coming out. And that is all that I have for this evening. Mr. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to praise the, the school district and um, Terry can help me if I forget. Our athletic teams have done fabulous this year. We have uh, a female who is the fastest um, runner in the state. Am I correct, Terry? In the state, uh, she is a junior, I believe. She is a junior. So I would like to, uh, Leah Taylor is her name. So I'd like to congratulate her. Our girls' basketball team did fabulous this year as well. They made it to the championship. And our boys basketball team, uh, this is the first time in Permanent Township High School history that they won the South Jersey uh, State Championship. So our, got our team, sports teams at the high school and the district as well are doing a fabulous job. And I think our bowling team as well is the, one of the first years they got a championship as well. So I just want to put that out there to say that our students here are doing uh, some great, our athletes are doing some great things. Now I am done. Mr. Cordier, I'd like to thank everyone for your comments this evening and coming out. Uh, have a safe trip home. Thank you. I'd just like to quickly mention that on April 4th at the Country Lakes uh, Clubhouse, TAG will be having a 15-minute presentation uh, geared towards um, learning how to talk to your kids about drug and alcohol use. Um, and it's only 15 minutes, so if you're not doing anything, on April 4th at 7 o'clock at the Country Lakes Clubhouse, stop in. Uh, that being said, I'd just like to thank you all for coming out. I'm sorry? I, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. I, 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 not, I know, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's the seat I'm filling. I'm sorry. But I'd, I'd probably get slapped by the, by the chief, or fire chief, if I failed to mention. Saturday... December 26th at the Country Lake Firehouse Easter Egg Hunt uh, March 26th what did I say? I'm sorry wow March 26th 10, 10 a.m. at the Country Lakes Firehouse is their annual Easter Egg Hunt uh, all are welcome if, if you haven't seen it it's a sight to see it takes the fire company two hours to lay in all of those eggs and 90 seconds for the kids to pick them up. <laughs> so it, it is it is fun to watch, so I encourage everyone to come out. You looking forward to Christmas? Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion to adjourn? Take a motion. Second.